Hey everybody, here we are live on our 19th stream, going live. I'd like to say hello to everybody, I already did. So today's stream was... <sighs> I was genuinely not even in the mood to make today's stream. I had a bit of a crappy weekend. Some nimwit decided to break into my office and steal a bunch of stuff that I had lying around amongst... Some were two hard drives on which I had a bunch of stuff that I had uh, pre-recorded for a full-fledged tutorial on creating something from scratch all the way up to getting stuff to Unreal. And that thing has been in the works for the last almost two months, a so month and a half. I've been working on that thing. We had, uh, actually I had over... 25 hours worth of material and that is simply down the drain now it's gone it's goddamn stolen so today i was not really in the mood to making this stream but then again i just wanted to make something so i didn't feel as crappy as i do so screw it let's go back to where we stopped in the previous stream <coughs> Basically, what we were doing on the, the last stream before we stopped, we we're trying to create something like this so we can use it in our scene for the bar. All right, so uh, first thing I want to do is uh, address this thing. At the moment, it looks a bit too wonky, too organic, so we need a bit more um, sharp edges here. So let's just quickly add in some support loops here. So one over here to hold this edge and just see how this thing is gonna look. Show me the cage. All right, that's gonna uh, harden up that uh, top edge. I wanna do the same thing for the bottom one, like here. There we go. And this probably wouldn't be a better idea to get this thing to go lower like this. All right, that's gonna work. And, oh yeah, I definitely want to fix these two. And get this thing to be straight on the bottom. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Shaw. There we go. This one and this one. And that's gonna clear up that issue over there. Let me really, really quickly check out the textures for this thing. It shouldn't be a problem since it's a pretty much a box, but by default it doesn't have any uh, UVs, so it's going to do the UV map with a box on it. To make sure that the distribution is right, uh, I'm going to make it a square box of 100 by 100 by 100, something like that. And that's, that should pretty much cover up uh, the UV part for this thing, for, for now at least. Later on I'm probably going to do a proper unwrap. So for now, it's fine like this, it just stick. All right, so we move, like this, yeah. We move, so back to the material. It was undefined. And delete the UV map. All right, so once I have uh, the side, I'm gonna need one more on this side, but before I add in uh, that thing, I need to create the holder for the barrel. So basically what I have in mind is this thing, this piece of wood. So let me go ahead and create that. It shouldn't be that hard because it's a simple box that has a, a shape in here to hold the barrel. So let's go with the box. That shouldn't be too big, something like this. So 30 by 80, but ooh, not that high up. 30 by 80 by, I'll picture this thing like three centimeters. Yeah, that should be fine, I guess. All right, so put it up here. Raise it up to about there. And what I want to do in here is uh, make this transparent. So now what I can do, make an edit poly, put in one edge over there, another one over 
in here like that delete all of these edges on the outside and simply cap these interconnect those two and now we have this thing protruding on this side which is what we want hey Vladislav move this more to the inwards like that so we can hold that shape better okay now once i have this thing i want to make it so that the middle part of this is over here or in line with the center of my uh, barrel there we go, like that. The reason why I want to have this thing in the center is because I'm going to use, be using symmetry. And that means that I can only have to work on half of this uh, thing, not on the whole uh, thing. So just drop in the symmetry modifier. And there we go, now we have this thing uh, on the two sides. All right, so what I want to do now is uh, make the supporting geometry to hold the form for this thing. So I'm going to put one edge in here, one more in here in the middle, and move this thing upwards like that, move it uh, on like that, and now just try and get this thing to be, oh, this, this one, all right, spread out better something like this that's cool and at the same time I want to have the same thing happening on this side as well so that means I want to snap this thing over there I want to snap this thing to here these as well so we have uh, distribution more even and move this thing downwards and move this thing downwards like that and now here's the thing i'm going to select this thing and copy it one more time on the bottom over here and in here i'm going to make it an instance so whatever i change in the, the bottom one changes up on the top one as well in the geometry wise all right awesome now select this thing move it upwards like that and oh and behold, I've actually got this thing from the first try. This, the size is actually right, which is weird, which almost never happens, but hey, today, at least for this, I got lucky. Okay, so if I have that holder, all I gotta do is just get this uh, original one, give it its supporting edges, and yeah, we can continue on from there. So, let's stick with uh, this one get the corners here to hold out that form like that one edge in here another one in there and there another one to hold this edge one more here and one more over here and now once we put on a turbo smooth on top of the symmetry it should give us a really nicer result like that the isolate and there we go it's really flush with how this thing is supposed to hold it and the bottom holds uh, that form so everything is fine which means that I can take another barrel drop it on top of here and this thing will hold it and move it back a bit so it kind of rests on that metallic part there we go so it's really really in position cool all right so i'm going to select both of these move one more version to the back and make sure that in here we don't have any clipping which we don't which is nice and all great so we have a holder for this thing and get all of those, make them gray, uh, get even 
this uh, go dollar sign material equals sum defined. That will remove all the materials. I want to have this thing again open up and get this thing to be grayish color and get these to be the dark gray. And this can be also dark gray. There we go. And now close the group. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make one more on this side. So affect the pivot center to object and make it pivot to pivot. X, Y, and Z is fine. And simply just mirror it on the X axis as a copy. Click OK. And do we have our holder for our barrel, which is not bad for a single one, but I might as well want to create one more version that is going to be for two barrels. So for this one, I'm actually just going to copy out one more barrel from the top, like this. There you go. All right, so this beer rack is going to it's pretty close to what we have in uh, this version but in this one you actually have those uh, plastic barrels which is not what I'm going for I want to have that more vintage looking uh, wooden barrel look so I guess this is fine but now I just want to have one more version that's gonna be uh, basically as a shelf for two or maybe even three barrels so let's go ahead and do that really quickly. First of all, I should just save this thing. There we go. All right, so just so we can save it, I'm actually gonna delete this uh, or just move this thing to the side. Or better yet, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, create a new layer and call this thing single layer. A single stack and get everything to transfer over to the single stack uh, layer like that and now I'm gonna select everything make a copy or clone it and create them into a multi stack there we go so I'm gonna hide the uh, single stack and I'm going to work on the multi-stack uh, tool. So, I hide this thing to the side so I can actually see what's what later on. Okay, now, uh, select this thing, move it over to this side, and here's what I'm going to do now. Uh, on this place where it actually uh, finishes, I'm going to go in here with the edit poly, as Actually, above the symmetry, and turn on the turbo smooth, isolate this thing, and in here drop in another symmetry modifier. This symmetry modifier, I'm going to go inside it and drag it all across, all the way up to here, like that. And on top of it, I'm going to drop in an edit poly. I will probably not need those two edges to hold this uh, edge now, so delete that thing. With the turbo smooth uh, reapplied, now we should get something like this. In this case, now we can stack double the barrels. So, ah, all right. So these two can be deleted now. So get these two barrels to move over like that. Copy and this thing will move back in like that. It doesn't, it's not touching anything like that. Let's test it out from the front. Okay, it's not touching, it's not touching here, it's not touching there. So we're pretty much set with uh, that get uh, both of these Amrit or Amit 
And get it out there. I'm gonna copy. It can be an instance or whatever. All right. So we have a holder for our uh, multi-stack and we also have one for the single stack. I can actually get this thing. I saved this before I can anything else to it. I move this thing to the side. Now show the multi-stack and we can just get them close one to each other like that in our scene. And it's gonna look it's gonna look better. I'll just say it like that. Alright, so we have a stack of barrels. So now the next thing that we will need is probably gonna be one more stack that's gonna be for bottles for wine. I think that the last time we were checking stuff around, I did, I did think that we found a wine rack. Oh yeah, we did something like this. So we can even uh, reuse some of the uh, bales that we have. But in this case, I actually want to create an actual geometry for this barrel. Because it will be seen in the interior and the exterior. Oh, and another thing that I would like to uh, basically uh, note is that when I'm creating this scene, uh, the scene that's going to be the bar, what I do have in mind is the ability for you to go inside Unreal or pretty much uh, any VR ready uh, solution and walk around this scene. So I actually got uh, quite a few questions from people asking me, why am I uh, working on things that will never be seen on a render? Or uh, that they can go around and make it so that the render will never actually see those little parts. Here's the thing. When you're making a render for a still image, you can cheat any way you want. But the problem is when you're trying to create something that's going to be uh, on a VR or pretty much in a real a render in real time where the customer or your client or pretty much the player or pretty much anyone can walk around the scene and view it from multiple angles because you never know where your uh, viewer is going to go with it. So you want to cover up all of the possible uh, angles on whatever it is, uh, it is that you are creating. Hence, all the, deten uh, all the detail or attention to details. Yeah, so let's go with this. I'm actually uh, okay with how this thing looks. So I'm gonna, s ooh, yeah, I'm gonna save. And now I want to create another layer and call this wine stack. Now for this, the wine stack, what I want to do here is simple. I actually want to take one of these uh, barrels, I'm gonna put it here as a copy, move it to my wine stack, and this is the only thing that's left. All right, so like I said, I want to have an actual geometry for the planks and everything because I don't want to get this thing with uh, any texture. I want to have it uh, as actual geometry because this will be seen and we will have stuff going inside it. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to make sure that I have my uh, images uh, ready. So from what I can see, these are smaller barrels. And this one is actually half a barrel. So we can create this thing and this can be used uh, as an, well, as an addition to the bar here. And this one can be used in our storage area next to the uh, barrels for the beer. So let's go ahead and create this thing first. So I get these two down. All right, so for that one, I'm actually, well, let's just close this one. For this one, like I said, I'm gonna only need half of it. And before I do the half of it, it's gonna be probably to about there. So open up this group, and let's see how this thing is gonna be made. 
not the keys. Don't see it. Okay, cool. I do have turbo smooth is on. Symmetry. Oh yeah, awesome. So without the symmetry, this actually is half of a barrel. So I don't have to have to do that. Oh snap, I just realized something. What I can do is go over, make one selection like this. But first of all, huh, okay, it's not gonna be that easy. I don't have a middle part because the, this middle was actually closed off and in here we are gonna need that thing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, select this and grow, 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 grow like this delete and now make it a shell so it's actually filled up uh, this thing can go in for like uh, two centimeters zero and this should give us that nice look straighten corners I won't change too much but it can stay like this it's actually fine and on top of the shell oh, turn this thing off on top of the shell Hey guys, what up? On top of the uh, shell, I can put an edit poly. Now, uh, get this entire uh, ring. Now, loop it around. And from here, heat it up with a chamfer. A very small chamfer here. So 0.1, I guess. Could be even smaller, 0 0.05, 5 millimeters. And make it a open chamfer. This will make it so it has an actual hole to it. So click OK. And now, here is the thing that I should have probably done before I did that. Which I'm going to do it right now. Uh, Control Z back so I don't screw it up. And delete that thing. So ring loop. Chamfer. 0 0.05 and an open chamfer like that there you go and now let me see something if i cap this thing off like that hmm let me just really 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 think about how to do this thing without actually having to screw it up. Or if I do it this way, will it change? How long if I did? Okay, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I have 18 sides. All right, so. All right, let me. Let me just try this thing out first. Let me detach this as a clone. And uh, there's I not want to so it's uh, 360 divided by 18, it's 20. Alright, 20, it's easy. 20 and go. 18 sides, so 17 sides. Number of copy 17 instances. Alright, so you can move over this side. Aha! So now I actually have just this thing, which means I can select this entire uh, edge. Bridge it. Ah, without that. Damn it. Whatever. Without this thing. So, bridge. And bridge. The middle one is really not important, as it will not be. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to use a symmetry or. Oh, actually, wait a second. This is going to be a half of it. So, it will be important. So, I have to cap this thing. I kind of forgot that. All right. So, since. All the rest are actually instances of this thing. I can go in here, jump for this thing. With a very small amount, 0 0.05. 
and a 0 0.5 from the tension, like that, and and the isolate, and drop in a turbo smooth, and wait a second, jump frog, yeah. So the minimum angle should be bigger. Yep. So it doesn't add those chamfers on the uh, uh, on these cuts because when we, we, uh, the angle is smaller, it adds chamfers here, and that is going to screw up with our smoothing. So increase this minimum angle, and now when we add the turbo smooth, it's going to give us a smooth plank over there. I'm just check see if everything's right. This thing is okay. And the isolation. All right, cool. This works. And delete that group. Delete this with the symmetry. Delete this gap. Mm -hmm. Here, oh yeah. So delete the turbo smooth, delete the symmetry, uh, delete. Do I need to delete this or? Yeah, it can actually be used. This thing I can use. We're happy to delete it because this can come over to the back and cover up the back side like that. There we go. Can give us a nice ending. There we go. Much better. And the only thing that I need to do in here is again reapply the turbo smooth. Make sure it's not clipping, which is not. Okay. Cool. So I have geometry, dense geometry for that matter. Let me just see how. All right. Let me try the statistics for this thing. So I so ooh, is it 60k for just this thing. Amazing stuff. All right, cool. And in here, I just want to add in two more boxes or boxes. That box, that was a boxy. So two more boxes. So let's try with a 55 by two by whatever. So that's really, really important. There. Okay, now go in with the edit poly, drop in an edge, move it all the way back to about here, like so. And important thing this is a barrel, so it's going to flail out on the corners, on the downwards, like that. And rotate this thing 45. One more version. 90 like this. Just so we don't get them to inter interlock on the uh, beginning here. Just drop this and. Ah, damn it. I can make it uh, unique. Move it back just so much. All right, now, really quickly. Again, just drop in a chamfer. Like always, just a very small amount, 0 0.05, 0 0.5. Copy this thing from here, apply it over here, so paste it there, so we have the same exact one, and there we go, those two can be a different color, and I think we are close enough to what we were going for in here. 
I can even get rid of uh, one of these uh, metallic parts. So let's do that. Um, above the shell, I want to edit poly. And get this thing to move a bit back. And I'm going to have to scale it outwards just to be in tune with what we just did. Like that. Select this all the part, delete. So with the turbo smooth reapplied, and now I can actually see how big this thing is gonna get. I select it. There we go. Go. Awesome. So we have this, which is more or less uh, this barrel here, but with a twist of our own. It doesn't have, uh, how many does this thing have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's more, uh, just more of these uh, planks. Ours is 18, but if we follow this thing, for whatever reason that we want to have it so it's the same exact number we just can count how many of these planks are it's the same process and that's it all right let's uh, create our fourth uh, version which is going to be the other rack for the wine which is this thing and this one is again half a barrel but this time around the cutting portion is not in the middle but actually across it so let's go ahead and do that as well and again make another so this is going to be the one let's let me just really quickly check how many of these things do i have let me just save as a different uh, scene Do not dare crash. Okay. And go. Barrel soon. Or two. Ah, uh, a Terminator TV and. Uh, I don't think you missed a lot. We started like what? What was it like half an hour ago? Plus, this is a live stream, man. You can uh, just like slide back on the thing, and you can just watch the whole thing whenever you have the time. That's the beauty of live stream. All right, so and this thing. Hmm. Makes me hungry. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna close this. Actually, I'm gonna put it to the side. Now let's check and see what else do we have in here that's created. Ah, so it's in the same place for this thing. So this should move over here. Well, basically, if you're uh, wondering what we've created so far, this is it. We have the we finished up the single stack. We created a double stack, and on top of that, we also created uh, this holder here for the wine. And now we just want to create one more. That's going to be the uh, half cut. But that thing is going to have to be for a smaller, um, a smaller wine. Or bottle holder because this one is gonna go in the uh, uh, in our storage area and I think that uh, this thing is a much smaller version of it and this thing should go on top of the bar so you can actually serve uh, beverages or wines directly from it so it's gonna be an interesting thing to add to our uh, scene or at least that's what I think is gonna happen, but we'll see. All right, let me just check something. All right, it's fine. Okay. 
okay. Eames Plywood Lounger. What the hell is an Eames Plywood Lounger? Lynx! Hold on a second. Uh, what's the name of that thing? Thing. I cannot say it, but there is nothing in. Uh, ooh. Okay, that scared the crap out of me. Um... See if this thing is going to work. All right. So, about that thing with the Ames plywood lounger. <laughs> I cannot say this thing. YouTube would so, so demonetize me for that thing if I said that thing. Uh, okay, let me see what is this. Things, uh, why would lounge lounge chair? Oh, dude, I, I, I've created a bunch of these things. I know this chair. I've actually sat in one of these. They're comfy up to a point where you just want to like throw it out of the room because these chairs, it's like they were made where uh, for an age where you go from a child to an adult. For it's like this thing is made for like, I don't know, an 11 year old. So, ugh. I hate these chairs, but. Yeah, what, what's, what, what, why would you want to see me model this? This is basic box modeling. Just take a box, you angle it here, angle it there, get this thing. Uh, so this thing is a different uh, spline, just extrude it upwards, get this thing to bend on the edges, get this thing to bend. Uh, I've actually done quite a, like, if you take on the, the stuff that I've already done in my tutorials, you can easily create this thing. Uh, why would you uh, Why would you complicate stuff with Marvel Designer on this thing? This there's no there's no need for it. This this is a very simple chair. But hell, I can create a tutorial on this thing. It's gonna be easy. Yeah, for, uh, one of the first things that I said when I actually started this stream is uh, today's stream I did not want to create because what happened is 
this week, somebody broke into my office and stole a bunch of stuff that I had uh, in my office, amongst which were my tablet, my phone, my uh, drawing board, my Intuos Pro is, is gone. He stole two hard drives, and one of those hard drives had a uh, thing that I was been working on for the last month and a half, and there was an entire project from starting to getting it into Unreal, and there was like over 25 or maybe even 30 hours worth of video already saved. So I thought that it was going to take me like another week or maybe two weeks and get it finished and then uh, basically put it out there so people can purchase it and with any money that would come from that endeavor I would reinvest it and buy an actual license for V-Ray Next so I can create some uh, tutorials on V-Ray Next but well I guess that is all down the drain now and I would have to recreate it all from scratch and god damn I hate that idea but what, what, can, you, what can you do it's life <sighs> All right, so if this thing is finished, let's go ahead and create one more wine, uh, wine rack. So I'll just create one more wine rack. Now for this wine rack, what I want to do is uh, get this thing around as a copy, put it in my wine rack, put it down. Oh, by the way, when I keep talking to myself, this is what's happening. I am just sorting out my layers. So later when I'm exporting stuff, I know exactly what I'm doing for it. Uh, okay, Tenver Chima, sorry, dude, for foliage, what is the best tutorials I want to learn? Uh, okay, what is it that you want to learn about foliage? Because when you said, I want to learn about foliage, that's a very broad paint to br uh, or a very broad uh, brush to paint with. What is it that you want to learn about foliage? You have to be more precise. Nah, man, I ain't gonna take no dog. Branches and leaves. What? You want to you want to model branches and leaves? I'm confused, man. Yeah. Oh, dude, there is no link here. Wait, wait a second. I think YouTube doesn't allow links. Oh, snap. I did not know that. Uh, okay. Uh, if you want to leave me a link, go over on the Discord, uh, on the Discord uh, server. Uh, you want to learn modeling branches and leaves in the pipeline through UE4. All right, uh, I get what you're saying. So if you want to learn how to get foliage from 3ds Max or pretty much any other uh, software and get it inside Unreal Engine 4, guess who has made a tutorial about it? Me. Oh, wait a second, somebody actually did. Oh, hello. Where's the atmosphere? Okay. Oh. Uh, dude, if you want to uh, drop in any link, just come over on the uh, Discord channel and drop the line in here because for some reason, uh, I'm not seeing any links when you guys uh, post them over here. So drop in here, leave a link, and other people will be able to see what, what's going on as well. So. Go over on the Discord. It's in the description here. You can just click on the Discord server link, and from this video, and it will drop you over here. And uh, come to think about the foliage thing, 
if you want to learn how to go and create foliage that's going to be for uh, Unreal 4, I do have a video of that thing. It was, what's, what was it called? Yeah, modeling a low poly plant in 3ds Max and creating a fern plant inside Unreal 4. I mean, hell, uh, it's this video. So basically, Example, you can even see how I get a uh, get it set, set up. Because when it's, you, you and it's not going to change it. And full screen. Simply put this thing into this. this uh, here's this uh, fern inside Unreal. How you can scatter it around. How you can get everything done. And also how you can uh, use the brushes inside Unreal to get something as like soon this. As it's uh, finished so adding in all everything that you just asked me to tell you done. where you can learn well, now I can yeah, see you can just I get go in closer, and check this thing this out nice field of uh, green oh snap really they have 3d ivy in unreal is it the same uh no hold on a second they say no unreal What the hell? Dude, this is not Unreal. This is some dude's... Oh, okay. I, I... I was just about to say this is some guy uh, going in his uh, backyard, but he just did the whole thing with the... Uh, showing of the different textures and the clay build and everything and holy shit yeah but if you asking me how this thing is made i i can tell you right away magic who is this guy hi man he's got to subscribe i'm gonna check him out Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure this thing uh, was scanned, uh, Jamma. There's no way in the hell that somebody created this thing uh, in uh, Photoshop or whatever. This was either photo scanned or made with photogrammetry. One of uh, one of the two. There's no way this thing was created. Photoshop. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for this guy. I'm gonna check. Oh wait a second. Uh, is an nvidia edge of course he is uh one question though uh, his videos that you just give uh, gave me uh what languages uh are those videos in let me check god damn this thing looks so ridiculously realistic ah uh, hell he only got videos where he's showing Oh, snap, I know this guy. I've actually seen him. Uh, I've seen a bunch of his stuff on, show up on Twitter. Yeah, I think he won uh, something from... Yeah, I remember this. Uh, he had... Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the video. This thing. It was blasted everywhere. Like... Uh, I think that even Unreal picked it up, Epic picked it up, they showed up everything that he created, and yeah, see, everything he made it was really, really good. Everything in here is uh, made with photo scanned uh, textures, and uh, all the trees and stuff were made with uh, uh, what was it called, speed tree and then import it into Unreal, so it, it has some uh, animation to it. And the, um, the modeling, everything is fine. The foliage, everything is top notch. And uh, all of the stuff that you're seeing in here is pretty much this guy with uh, scattering stuff from Megascan Studio. So yeah, he's a great guy. But at least he knows how to make stuff really, really interesting.
The problem is that, well, he is not making any tutorials about it, so whatever he knows, he keeps it to himself because he's a smart guy that likes to get paid. Alright, so now we'll open up this thing up. Alright, so for this one, I'm gonna wipe that. It's fine. It's one stack, turn it off. Turn these guys off. Okay, so for this, now open up the group, delete. Now, this thing here is gonna be a bit different because the server is not gonna be needed. So now, if I turn off the symmetry, it's gonna clip this thing in half. Since uh, this is not the case we want, but we want to have this thing clipped in the middle like this. What I'm gonna do here instead is, in, on top of this symmetry, drop another edit poly, and in here, go in and select half of it, like here, and delete. And before I do that, I'll just select that edge and select this edge. Control click on the polygon, two rows, and delete. Select this uh, edge, select that one, because those are bad edges. Select uh, that one and that one, delete. Actually, select that one as well, so just I will not delete it. Select that, delete, and drop in a shell. That shell is going to make it so it's two centimeters by zero, and make it so it has straight corners. It's fine. All right. So now, edit it all here. Okay. Get that edge and go snap it. Snap this vertex just on the x-axis to that vertex over there. It's going to be like that. Snap this thing to there. There we go. Now we have that really well done. All right, so uh, an insane question is UE4 not do well in ES. What the hell? Dude, I have no idea what you're saying. In 3S actor, in GI, it is sad. No idea what you just said, man. You got me so confused. Get those lines over there. SSS. Subsurface scattering. What? All right. Ah, all right. So you were asking me if uh, Unreal 4 does well with subsurface scattering. It has its own material for that thing. You need to know how to uh, like work with it. Okay, so it's fine. Yeah, I know what you mean. If you're like going to be playing around with stuff that has subsurface scattering for like uh, skin and stuff, and how Unreal will deal with it, Unreal can deal with it. They just need to know how to set up the uh, scene. Yeah, so the wine barrel doesn't have these guys. Or does it have it? one in the bottom? Nope. I don't have any other one on the, in the corner here. I delete this. Oh crap. All right, nope. Ah, oh, snap, I should have left that one. <sighs> All right, let's try and fix this screw up. All right, so on top of here, I'm gonna add in one more edit poly. So, get this thing in. Select and row. Row one more time. There we go. Okay, cool. So detach. That's a clone, that's fine. So 
Now go make it mirror on the X. All right, there's a copy, that's fine. And in here now, select that edge. I just went down. Okay, that's not needed. So in here, select that edge, that edge, that edge. Delete. And that, that, delete. Uh, yeah, man, uh, I can play around with the smoothing groups for this thing or just add in the supporting geometry. In this case, it's just easier for me to add in the extra geometry. There we go. So these things are deleted like that. So now I just get that thing, attach it to this guy, and weld these with a very small amount. So one. Oh, what the hell? Why am I missing? Oh, snap. Of course I'm gonna... Mm. Okay. Nothing too bad. Ha 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 ha. Alright, so let's deselect some of these edges. This is what happens when you're unwillingly or unknowingly you screw up in the beginning you have to clean up after you it's not a fun thing to do but well, we have to do it so bridge this really don't bridge why oh, of course it's not a bridge to have some solutions over here all right so now everything is fine like that so bridge there we go all right, so one more edge now. Come on, what the hell? There we go. We get two connections. It's not slide, but pinch them around like that. That's gonna be fine. Do you have to be very, very precise which Udemy course? There's like hundreds of them. So you have to be... Alright, let's do this thing. Okay, so I'm just going to all these guys. Weld them together. Oh. Take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Fine. So eight is the right number. So we use point twenty-four. All right. Well, again with zero point twenty-four. That's gonna get it out of the way. One edge in there. Come on. There you go. And I think there should be one more going across here on the bottom as well. There we go. One in there, another one in there. Hold the whole circle and one more in there. So now if we drop in a turbo smooth, they should hold really well. Like that, which is nice. So just drop in a symmetry so we have it on the other side as well. So we're gonna have to redo the whole thing. So flip, turbo smooth, boom, we got our thing done. So it's gonna cover up. There we go, okay, that's fine. So let's, yeah, pretty much this is all there is for this thing. And the only thing that's a bit different in uh, compared to the other one is that this thing is uh, on this side a bit more squished in. So it has a bit of more flair for the dramatic on this uh, on this corner here. So it, uh, it's kind of caved in a bit. So I can I can easily make that by just going in here and in here with a 
So we can uh, already apply, get these guys here. Just and scale it upwards, we'll push it in a bit. And we get that small dip to happen once we put on all of the turbo smooth and like that. Ah, this can work. We can get out, uh, get away with this, at least for now. <sighs> All right, let me check this one more time. And the size is right, so I need to have one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, how about smoothing roof edge? Uh, I self-employed. Tell us about your career and pathway. All right, I've already uh, explained this. Uh, how about my career? About what I've done in the previous stream? I guess you are new ones here. So I'm uh, at the moment. I am doing uh, freelancing for a couple of different clients. I have uh, given lectures in an ATC in the university. I've given uh, lectures in an academy. I've uh, worked on different projects. Uh, I've worked on games. I've worked on ArcVis. Pretty much, I've worked on anything and everything that has to do with 3D. And if I have to say what I am, I would say that I'm a 3D generalist, which means I know a lot of stuff about things uh, that I shouldn't be knowing about and it's ah, it's fun if it wasn't fun I would not be doing this let's just say it like that if uh, you're not enjoying this uh, line of work you will really not stay in here for uh, for a long time you have to really really like it, the job in order to stay in, uh, and work in the field. All right, so now, if I get this thing to 45, move this thing downwards. All right, so I'm gonna make this thing bigger, so 90. 90, really? I can, uh, of, course, of course this is 90. I forgot that this thing is uh, not to scale now. So it's going to be here in one. It's going to be two and three. All right, that was three. Now rotate around. Actually, not rotate, but I'm actually going to go ahead and mirror this in the Y as a copy, like that, go. Just need to clip out Hey everybody! Alright, so put this thing here so I can see what I'm doing. That's fine, it's okay. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's fine. All right, so I'm gonna go edit poly on this thing and attach these. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and attach all of them. And what this thing is gonna allow me to do is go in there with the, uh, what is it? The slice plane. I got a slice plane. Rotate around, rotate 90 degrees and make one cut in there. So I make one slice in there, another one in there. I turn off the slice plane and this should give me the ability to go in here and select everything that's outside that uh, slice plane that we just did. Delete. so I can see it on this side better. In here though, I do, I can just hide this thing around. I have to clip it. Ooh, let me just see something. Yeah, 
when I move stuff with the edge constraint, it will not screw up the lines. So that's good. So I can, oh, no, 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 no. All right, so I have to do something else for that thing. What the hell? Small dog. Ah, it's giving me spasms. Fine. Where? Both of you are going to go. What the hell? Fine, just be, be like that, no problem. Um, move on the local. Really? There we go. I'm gonna screw up anything more. Let's move it on the local. Okay, move this thing upwards, upwards, downwards, downwards. That is fine, that's okay, that's cool. Alright, all of that is fine, everything is within our place. So I'll go to, I can't back to view, so I'll screw up anything more. Alright, now a simple shell should give us some thickness to this thing. And it should be have a very very small thickness because this is metal like that and another edit poly just so i can select these guys and move them you know, inwards like that so they're not clipping with the other guys and on top of everything here just drop a chamfer with a 0.01 Oh, hell, this is way too small. So, all right, let's try it with 0 0.05. I don't want to have that sharp. Like that. And drop in a turbo smooth. That turbo smooth will hold it well. Although, here is another thing that I should, shouldn't should uh, have to explain, but I have to uh, drop it at least uh, once, is when you have these uh, sorts of very, very long polygons, what you want to do is come in here with a couple of connects and fix up the, those uh, long uh, polygons because if you have long polygons or, or elongated polygons and you try to add in uh, turbo smooth, sometimes you can get some issues with uh, deforming. So just so we're 100% sure that the thing doesn't happen, we come in here, we drop in a couple of uh, divisions, and now when we put on Turbo Smooth, it's going to have more to work with, and we're going to have a much cleaner edge, like that. So on here, just drop in a darker color. Uh, do you ever use those direct X textures in Max? What do you mean direct X textures? Oh, no, 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 it's not fitting. Yeah, this thing is more in the room. All right, so I think we're close enough to what we're seeing here. At least for something that's going to be like a prop for our bar. All right, so I do isolate. On. What am I missing? Ah, of course. So let's see the whole thing. So how many assets do we have for this thing? Ah, of course, you want to, uh, you mean, 
this thing, the DX mode. Real time shading and stuff, lighting with the shadows and stuff. No, man, I, I don't like that thing in uh, Unreal. I mean, not Unreal, but uh, 3ds Max. It it's giving me headaches when I'm looking at that thing. I hate that thing. When I'm working in uh, Max, I, I prefer to see it like this. I even hate it when I have this uh, high quality thing, where it's kind of giving you this uh, crap with the shadows. And if you put in like any sort of uh, lighting, it's giving you lighting and how stuff would look like. I hate that. I always go with standard without any lighting. <clears throat> so I see what it, uh, I basically see what I'm modeling. I hate, I totally hate that uh, DX mode or the high quality mode or pretty much any of those modes. When I do my work, I work like this. Maybe it's because I've always worked like this. Maybe, it's, uh, maybe I'm just, uh, I'm not progressive enough to use this thing. I'm old school. All right, so now uh, let's go ahead and export these guys out. And I want to get all of them. All right, so first thing, the Y. Oh, wait a second. Here's what I forgot. God damn. All right, so for this thing, the wine, uh, it actually has something to uh, hold it. So in this case, since this is gonna go inside my bar, I wanna uh, reuse some of the stuff that I already have in here. So why not go in here and try to, how oh, is my stuff? Uh, Let's go in here and try to reuse this uh, thing here. So we go, put it like that, make it a copy. Uh, Why this time? Move it up there. No. this thing over on this side whenever I'm like doing stuff and I'm talking to myself so you probably think I've done lost my mind all right so single stack wine rack multi stack and wine rack uh, wine stack for this thing though I'm gonna have to make a bit of a change because this is half a barrel so let's see how do we get this thing to be smaller. Let's squish it. All right, so go in here. Get all of these guys to move in here. Now, deselect. Actually, just select this thing and this thing. And move it out like this. So now the symmetry get the mirror to go all the way up there, like that. Cool. Okay, let's move on. That's cool. All right, deselect the symmetry. And this thing, just make one more copy over on here, like that, and then get this thing, ah oh, crap, okay, get this thing to go back a bit, it's kind of sitting on top of this thing, it's holding it, and flush with the back, oh no, hell no. It's gonna be like this. I'm gonna have to make a bit of a modification to the front one. Because this thing is a bit higher. 
All right, so it should be that hard. Grab everything, move it upwards. There, right here. There we go. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna wait to hold that thing. Get everything in. So, move it all the way down. It's in the hole. So copy. Here, everything is okay. It's in place. And. Oh, yeah. Dude, uh, if you're gonna be doing stuff for Unreal. First, what you do is you do a proper unwrap for your uh, first or the diffuse channel. And then what you can do is basically take your proper unwrap, uh, apply a second unwrap UVW, name it uh, channel two, and then just repack it like uh, what Max would do. It doesn't have to be perfect, at least for the lighting uh, map. You just need to have allocated space for it. You have you want to have proper uh, uh, you want to have proper UV unwrapping for uh, textures. Uh, you don't actually have to have proper unwrap for uh, light maps. Hell, even Unreal does them automatically, but the way that Unreal does it, it just takes everything and applies a planar projection to it. And all of them, uh, all of those little uh, pieces, it just flattens them out. And sometimes that can create some uh, lighting issues later on, so you really don't want to do that. So let's go X copy. Oh my God. So what you do is once you're finished with your uh, proper unwrapping, just take everything you've done and just hit repack that will make you a proper unwrap a uh, proper light mapping uh texture or a light mapping unwrap all right so what is this so this is the wine stack now okay Back. This side. all right so i guess today it's has been in the name of this thing. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. Once I get over the idea that I actually lost about a month and a half of work and over 30 hours of video, I, over 25 hours, no, it's 30, over 25 hours of recorded video, and I uh, get over that crap. I'm gonna uh, go back to creating some more tutorials for YouTube, and I'm gonna take some of the stuff that we already created in here uh, on the stream and make them uh, ready for Unreal. I will explain how to model everything uh, correctly, how to uh, unwrap everything correctly, how to prep it up for uh, unwrapping uh, so you have proper light maps, and how to get everything from uh, 3ds max to unreal how does that sound for you guys Study frequently asked for streaming. Thank you. All right, man. No worries. Uh, whatever questions you want to pop in for the stream, I'm always glad to answer. I love uh, people when they come to me with their uh, problems. Uh, this is uh, if this is the first time you're on the stream. This is pretty much the bar that we've been working on. What you're seeing here is uh, just open up everything. The walls here. 
Ow, what are these walls, man? Ow. Ah, the walls. Th these are the inner walls. So we did. Or not? What the hell is inside? Uh huh. Ah, wait a second. Uh, I remember. These are the walls the, that we just created for our original uh, box. We got a solar panel, a main container, yeah, all that stuff. The front door, the bar walls. All right, so here we go. This is what we have for our bar so far. Uh, I do have uh, this thing imported into Unreal, like really, really uh, not without caring. What the hell did I do? Oh, what the? Oh, wow. All right. All right, uh, apparently Unreal just updated their own uh, launcher. And right now, I have no idea where my stuff is. Library? I guess it's library. Fine. All right. That's fine. I can work with this. So the bar testing. Just make four twenty one. Yeah, that's fine. We could uh, how we could take scans out of badges or photo scan, optimize them and bake normal maps and stuff without Z Ah you wanna get all of that done without ZBrush. Uh, okay. What do you want to use instead of ZBrush then? You wanna use 3D code? Your shrub stop. Man, this is a really good question that I'm actually inclined to ask everybody. Uh, do you guys like these live streams? Or how do you like them? Are they, are they helping you for something? Alright, so like I said, I uh, did a really quick import. This was like a couple of uh, streams ago, so nothing here has actually been done to it. I just uh, applied some really simple uh, materials just so I can fly around the scene and get a feel for the space. And when you walk in here, like see this guy with his fingers uh, up in the air, his hands up in the air. That's that's the highlight of my import because I have no idea how this thing happened, but it did. So yeah, uh, you can just fly around the scene, get a feel for it, and so far I think it has plenty of sp uh, like space to fly around with, uh, play around with this thing. And in here now we have the, uh, the bathroom that we worked on in the previous uh, stream. So just. Oh, just hide this wall. There you go. So in here now we have this uh, door that's uh, in, that's going to a bathroom. We have our uh, guy uh, and the boys in the girls' room next to each other because it's a really tiny bathroom. We have the sink with the uh, light with the uh, rope. A mirror and everything so yeah we got that thing we did this thing i think uh, last stream up here on the second floor we have a different uh, distribution of stuff like in here uh if you come over oh actually yeah this is the older 
the original one that I had created for a different project. So as you can see, this thing is actually even unwrapped, which is weird. Yeah, but in our scene, we created a different uh, pool table, this one, and yeah. So now, uh, the things that we just created are for this room. So let me go in and actually check it out. So let me close this. I need it. Close this. Close this. Okay, so now this is going to be the stock room. Nice. So now I'm going to make a new layer for this stock room. Now, uh, let's save this thing up before I screw up something else. And go to my stuff. Hey, she noted. Uh, all right, uh, just before uh, import anything else, uh, to answer your shroud stocks question, uh, dude, uh, here's the thing. What you're talking about right now is how do you go about uh, photo scanned objects or photogrammetry models? How do you clean them up and put them to Unreal without actually using any uh, sculpting? Short question, uh, short answer, you don't do it that way. Because the first thing that happens is when you get stuff from either uh, pretty much any software that's made for photogrammetry, be it a reality capture or photo scan or pretty much anything else that you might be using, you're going to get quite a bit of uh, things that you have to fix. So you're going to have uh, fly around uh, polygons, you're going to have some stuff that you're going to have to clean up. For that, you will need uh, software that's going to be either uh, ZBrush or 3D uh, Coat, whatever works, whatever floats your boat. So, yeah, you're going to have to learn that. It's not that hard, honestly. You give it a month, all right, for, for the ZBrush, honestly, give it two months. But, yeah, you can, you can learn it because you will not be needing to, like, go into depth to as to how to create a lot of stuff. You're just going to need to know how to clean stuff up. All right, so what was, what was I doing? Oh yeah, important stuff. And for this, we want to import the scene that which scene what? Ah, wait, so we're gonna merge this thing. Oh, wait. Just find it, Twitch, scene, and go barrel scene. It's stock room, it's fine, barrel scene, and merge file. Okay, so I got all the barrels that we just created. Go on back into my scene. Oh snap, wait a second, if I just merge this thing, did I just import all of the layers as well? Oh, ah. I can't get everything to go into the active layer. Oh snap, now everything is one goddamn layer. Ah, okay. No biggie. Is this thing got at least it's still on its group? That's fine. That's fine, we can work with this. I have to make everything here. Nah, I can clean this thing up. It's not a problem. Alright. So oh hey, oh. Normal map and oh, okay. No, that's not how you do it. All right, let's see. Okay, 
okay, 90 degrees. And with this thing, is it even gonna have a front and back or no? No, same thing. Okay, so we can move this thing to the back. Move it there like so. Okay, uh, one more version. I don't even know what before I do this. I'm gonna go in and stir that thing. I'm gonna get this thing done turbo smooth. Alright, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, get the ones in the back as well. Get another one in here with two barrels. And a good question is do we have enough space to slam two of these next to each other and have enough space to move between them? Nope. Alright. Go back, do that. So with those two up there, I just need to put one more in. So delete the turbo smooth, delete this turbo smooth. Get both of those without the turbo smooth. Same in here. Does anybody else in here have any interest in how photogrammetry works? While well, we are at the actual uh, topic of photogrammetry, that, that is. If you ask me, I think that photogrammetry is going to have a lot of a big role to play, especially in the very, very near future, because a lot of the things that are being used in video games nowadays, they are all coming from straight out of uh, photogrammetry. The thing here is, though, is that a lot of the photogrammic, uh, photo, photogrammetry assets are coming from places like Megascan Studios or Quixel or like stuff like that. So not a lot of people are actually doing photogrammetry, but there are actual companies that are looking for people proficient in doing photogrammetry. I've worked with companies like that, that they go on set and they actually take uh, pictures there, and then they need somebody to clean that uh, information. This thing over there. Oh, God damn, this is a big one. All right, so we zoom in, rotate this thing. 45 is fine, and scale it in. So it's something in line with what we have in here. And I think this is more or less the same, the right size. Like I said, this is going to be more of a thing that you would use in your bar 
give it a bit more put it in here drop it down and I knew that I forgot something I didn't create it ah damn it okay Happening in Maximus auto saving or is it crashing? It's one or two. Please don't crash. Okay, it didn't crash. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything to it. Just gonna save on top of this. And anti isolate. In here, there is no there is no uh, chair here, so don't get sitting here. So here is where you can put in stuff like different lines and stuff. Just put it there, make it bigger. Actually, this size is definitely going to be the, uh, directly controlled as to how big an actual size of a bottle is. And since I don't have a created bottle in here, let's keep this. So for now, I'm just going to leave it like that as a added asset in here. All right, so today we populated this room in here. We created a bunch of different barrels, a bunch of different uh, stock. In here, I would probably go in and add in some uh, bottles in here. I'm not, being, I'm not going to be doing this thing on the stream now, but... Here's the thing. I want you guys to help me out now. Let's go and try to scope up some ideas as to what we should add to our uh, bar. Like, tell me some ideas. What do you want to add? Like, what sorts of assets or something that you would like me to model that we can continue piling up on this bar? Because from what I'm seeing uh, up until now, what we have done is here we have a stop room, which is great. We have a place where we can keep all of our drinks. We have a balcony, which is nice. You can sit around, have some fun with your friends. We have a playroom on the inside. Again, a very interesting concept. Here we have a bathroom for uh, men and women. Uh, we have the inner part here, which has some seating for like bigger companies or friends. We have some seating on the outside. So the only thing that I would add in that we might be missing is the name for the bar. And after that, it's pretty much we have this thing modeled out. Let me just go and this uh, I'm not gonna be modeling a jukebox no no really help me, no. okay so with this the only thing that I want to add in here is gonna be that name for the bar what is the bar's name come on let's let's uh, uh, officially give this bar a name I've had some different people drop in different ideas. I want to hear you guys. Give me an idea about the name of the bar. Come on. Let's see what, what happens. And I'm going to be looking at some stuff. Bar name. This is what I'm looking at. This, this thing. I'm looking for 
bull. No, man, not bullshit. Die for it. What's this? This is not a bad look, but man, eh, it's more for, for a saloon thing. Clearly, by these parents, nah. I'm gonna have something more that has a geometry to it, not just a texture to it. But I guess. Joshua's bar. Really? That's this is as creative as they get. Bad kid now. Men to the left because women are always <laughs> right. Yeah. I like that one. Whiskey bar. You know what? I might as well just go ahead and create something like this. The boathouse. Stop making it. Eh, not a bad thing. Established on YouTube. Oh, hell yeah. Alright. This is going to be simple. So let's really, really quickly go in here. And create something like this. Uh, drop in a box. Uh, make this thing so 80 centimeters by 350 by 2. Oh, hell no. He's way too small. So 5. Okay. Move this thing to the back. Hang it up like that. Okay, so what I want to do is add a poly, connect two segments, then shift around like that, connect again, smaller amount like that. I'm not going to be very like that. That's cool. So what I want to do here before I do this though is select oh, this thing, go inset like that. Now extrude on the inwards like this. And scale it this way around as well. One in there, another one in there. All right, that's not a bad sign, or at least a plaque for the sign. Something like that. So, you know what? Isolate this thing. Are you, are you saving again? You better not crash. I, you didn't crash. That's a very good thing. Uh, save. Okay, so in here, what I'm going to do is go in and hit the text. 
Can I call this a nautical? It's fine. I'm going to have to find a better font for this thing, but it's fine. For now, I'm just going to have to work. Okay, I'm 80. Okay, this can just, oh, this is better, by the way. Not again. The fuck is this? Oh, hell, what the hell is going on here? Okay, so uh, apparently this is a very bad Font because the C is all sorts of screwed up. Text. Not this, this is dumb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, people, we need a name. We are at the point where we need to get a damn name for this thing. There are 30 people online at the moment looking at this thing. Nobody has an idea for a name. Come on, I need a name. You say it, I make it. Make sure it's not something that YouTube will get me banned for it. Hi, Ali. You're right in the here in the right place at the right time and I need you to tell me how do we name our bar. Alright, until you guys decide how this thing is going to be called, I'm going to name it just the wet dog. And once you guys uh, come up with a better name, we're going to change it. So, so for now, it's going to be the wet dog. And I'm going to make one more copy of this thing. So, check the dog. Copy. And go to text. Size him. They call this thing established on YouTube. That's better. Oh. Uh, all right, this is all sorts of weird. Yeah, that was, that was w. I guess it's a weird font. I don't like this. 
with your bolt. Right there. Okay, both of these bring it dark color. Not bad, not bad at all. At least for now. We got some stuff clipping through the wall. Why does it go flipping? Damn it. Ah, I know exactly what this thing is the flipping issue. All right, we have our Thirsty Sailors uh, bar. Oh, hell, I have to name that thing as a bar as well, God damn it. Thirsty Sailors bar. And make this thing smaller now. Okay. Thirsty Sailors bar. Establish on YouTube. Make this thing more pronounced color. Hell, just give me a white color. Thirsty Sailor's Bar, establish on YouTube. Uh, it's cool. And this thing, uh, we have it there. So in here, I'm not needing it anymore. Wow, I have so much stuff. Stuff in there. So, oh, okay. Let's have to delete this thing and screw up something else later on. Oh, right. What is this? So this is the fence. And the fence. Just hide that thing away. Like that. And there's your 4.1 million polygons. Some amazing stuff. All right. I guess this will cover up for today's streaming session. Because I have like what I don't know five minutes, I'm gonna be starting modeling on something else. All right, so I'd like to thank everybody that was with me today. Like I said, I really did not intend to making this uh, stream today, but I'm kind of glad I did. Kind of get my head out of my bad mood. So we had some fun. We created some barrels and stuff. And hopefully next time we go live, uh, we create some more stuff and we have some more fun with us. And yeah, that would be it for today's stream. Oh yeah, everybody is looking at us live now at the moment and has some ideas as to where we can take this bar next. Uh, please be my guest and go over on Discord uh, and drop your ideas in there. We have on the on the Discord uh, server, we have this uh, place where you can just like drop stuff off, like show us uh, ideas, and I will check them out. They're fun. I will use them. As you can see, for, uh, things that I've seen from Yashi, like this tank here. This is where she, uh, she actually dropped in this uh, link on Pinterest. From there, we got the idea about creating the uh, the seating arrangements. Like these guys here, that's where I saw the idea, and we created this thing. That I even show you how you can get everything uh, modeled out and then export it into Unreal. 
and I will see about creating a separate tutorial about how to get stuff from uh, VS Max to Unreal. So that would be it for today. Again, for the second time, I would like to thank everybody that was with me today. You guys are great. And I will see you all in the next stream. Bye-bye, everybody. Peace.